Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so, so much for coming back. So today I'm gonna take you all step by step through how I achieve the perfect pixie every single time. So this is how my hair usually looks after about a week or two of just wearing it. It's oily, it's dirty. So let's go ahead and clean this hair. So I'm going to go in with my wide tooth comb and we're just going to detangle the hair before it's time to wash. Um, also because it's very rare that I manipulate my hair in between washes, um, this kind of gives me the opportunity to really look at my hair and see how it's held up over the last week or two. So now that the hair is detangled, it is time for us to wash. So almost every product used in this video is going to be by Care Care. I literally swear by their hair care products. This is their moisturizing shampoo and it is literally the most amazing shampoo on the planet. Um, I've found that standing in the shower while washing my hair has never really worked for me. Also, um, my neck does not enjoy me standing over the kitchen sink and washing my hair. So I've just kind of found that bending over a little bit and standing over the tub has just always been the best method for me. I'm going to wash my hair three times. I'm going to rinse and repeat three times. Um, the lather at first is not going to be great, um, but of course by the third wash, um, the moisturizer shampoo does what it needs to do. So once I'm done shampooing my hair, of course, I'm going to grab a towel and just squeeze my hair dry um, before I go in to detangle my hair. I also wanted to note that it is going to seem as if I'm being extremely rough throughout this entire video, but I promise I'm being incredibly gentle. Um, also, because of how short my hair is, it's not gonna look like I am detangling from the ends and working my way up, but I promise I am. <laughs> So now I'm getting ready to deep condition. I'm going in with Cara Cara's moisturizing conditioner. Um, and I don't deep condition with a deep conditioner. I deep condition with my regular conditioner. Um, and <laughs> I use a very generous amount for everything. So I'm just working it through my hair and then I'm gonna follow it with the comb just to make sure that it is spread evenly throughout the hair. So after I'm done combing it through my hair, we're just going to take a conditioning cap, we're going to tie it up in the back, and I'm going to condition my hair. So before I mow my hair down, I just wanted to clarify, uh, my beautician told me that I can choose between either deep conditioning under the dryer or deep conditioning in the shower. I'll be doing like 15 minutes of both. So if I decide I wanna sit under the dryer, I'll be sitting under there for 15 minutes. My shower typically is like 14 to 15 minutes long. And in the shower, the steam can kind of like do its work. You know what I mean? I haven't really been able to tell the difference between both. So this time I chose to just hop in the shower. So I'm about to rinse this conditioner out of my hair and then I'll come back so we can mold it down. So oh, this is typically what I use to mold down my hair and I only say typically because from time to time I will revert back to the Nairobi wrapping foam. Um, I don't know, I think that they're both equally as good. I just think that the Care Care one happens to smell a little bit better. Um, so of course I'm going to detangle my hair and then we're gonna go on ahead and start molding it down. 
You will notice that when I'm going in with my Care Care wrapping foam, I am not just going over the hair with the foam. I'm going to go in not only downward motions, but I'm also going to go in upward motions. Why? I need to make sure that every single strand of hair is coated with this wrapping foam. Um, I feel like the mold just lays better when every piece of hair is saturated with this foam. Also, if you are trying to mold your hair down and you feel like it's not laying the way that it should nine times out of 10, it is because you don't have enough foam in your hair. So I'm going to go in with a very small wrap tooth comb. Um, this is also just going to make sure that the wrapping foam is being distributed in the way it needs to to every strand of hair. Um, I am going to comb the hair down, regardless of where it is on my head. Uh, what that means is when the hairs are on the back of my head, I'm going to comb them down in the direction of my neck. When I get to the very front of my head I'm going to comb them forward towards my face I want for every piece of hair on my head to go down almost as if your hair is like a you th can think of it as almost like being a bowl and you just want to make sure that hair is laying in a downward position covering the entire bowl does that make sense <laughs> you will also notice that I am not creating a part in my hair this is because I'm incredibly indecisive and I may decide that I don't know where I want my part to be or if I even want to have a part. And the purpose of a mold is to make sure that you're laying your hair down in the way that you want it to look before styling, just so it makes the styling process easier. And if I've created a part and I decide that I want to change it, it might not be that easy after it has set under the dryer. Um, so because I don't have a part, I really just kind of determine which hairs I want to lay to the left and which ones I want to lay to the right but all of the hair is still going in the direction towards my face because it is at the front of my head on the beat. before I take my wrapping paper I just get my mirror and I make sure that everything is looking the way that I want it to because like I said once you sit under the dryer after your hair has dried it is going to set the very way that you decide to mold it so I'm gonna go in with my wrapping paper. I go in with two. So the first one is more so uh, gonna be like using tension. So I'm going to pull it as far as I can and then I'm gonna wrap the rest around, but I'm trying my best to do it tightly without ripping the paper. And then in the back, I'm just gonna use the leftover wrapping foam that I have just to lay it down. Then I'm going to go in with a second piece of paper and we're just going to tie it a little bit lower, covering my kitchen, and we're just gonna tie it in the front so I can have some sort of security. Because my hair is freshly relaxed in this video, my relaxer is probably like a week and a half old. Ooh. <laughs> it's probably a week and a half old, so it doesn't really require much paper. Uh, let me get like later on down the line where my hair is probably, it's not as easy for it to lay down. I'll need more paper for my mold. Um, but this is what it's looking like, so let's go to the dryer. I also just wanted to show you all what my portable dryer looks like. It's by Hot and Hotter. Um, just in case you were interested in getting one, I feel like if you are doing your own molds, it is imperative that you have a dryer. I would not recommend letting your hair air dry. It needs that heat in order for the mold to set the way it needs to. Child, I needed to take a break. It is hot under there. Um, I'm gonna take off. Okay, well, I almost removed it. Where's the rest? Okay. All right. So, this is what my mold down looks like. Oh, um, I don't want to go back under there. It's so hot. I'm going to go back under there for like 15 minutes and then I should be done. So, I put this in the video but I never used it what I was supposed to do I forgot that it was even here what I was supposed to do was before I went to go mold my hair down I was supposed to just take a little bit in my hand just massage my scalp and then mold it down I didn't do that so um we're just not gonna oil our hair I guess um so yeah before I get too flat ironing my hair I just want to let y'all know that um 
Both of these flat irons are going to be linked in my Amazon storefront because although the brand name is on here, I don't know what they're... So they'll be linked in my Amazon storefront as well as everything else I've used in this video. Um, this one, I don't, I don't know what the sizes are. I feel like this is like maybe like one inch. This is maybe like half an inch or a fourth of an inch. I'm not sure. Um, but I have not used this flat iron, the big one, since I first cut my hair. So I'm excited about that. Before I flat iron my hair, I am going to go in with this. And my beautician said that it serves as like a, like a heat protectant. So I'm going to comb my hair out. I'm going to scoop just a little bit, run it through my hair, and then we're going to start flat ironing. So I'm, I'm just going to have to skip oil this time because I didn't do it earlier. And I wouldn't do it after the fact. So let's get it. So I started combing out my mold with my Y2 comb, but it honestly was just not breaking my mold the way that I needed to. So I ended up getting um, a comb with much smaller teeth um, and that worked way better for me. Um, so I'm going to comb out my mold so that I can just kind of look at my hair, see the way that it molded. And as you can see, it's laying down in the way that I needed to for my styling and it's because of the way I molded my hair initially. So I'm grabbing what will serve as my heat protectant and I'm grabbing about a nickel sized amount and I'm making sure that I am emulsifying it in my hands. Um, the way this feels in the hands and in the hair, it's indescribable. It's almost like um, a wax almost um, and it literally makes the styling process a billion times easier um, and this gives me enough coverage to feel as if there is product in my hair without it necessarily weighing my hair down. After I have rubbed the wax through my hair, we're gonna go ahead and just comb through because that's just what I feel like I'm supposed to do before it's time to flat iron. Now with me flat ironing my hair, because I can't see what's going on back there, um, I know that my parts are not gonna be perfect, but I know that because I've been flat ironing my hair for so long at this length, um, I kinda can just get a feel for how much hair I'm supposed to grab, what feels appropriate. Um, but honestly, if you need to, it is okay to have a handheld mirror by where you can kind of like look at each section of hair before you even put the flat iron on it just to make sure that it's not too much, it's not too little. So I am just going down this section of my hair, curling it in a downward motion. Um, and I'm just gonna do this all the way down. And you're gonna see with this piece of hair, I realized that the hair is getting shorter and that it's time for me to go on ahead and switch over to my pencil flat iron. So I repeated the same steps on the right back side of my head and this is what it looks like. It looks a little crazy, but once it's calmed out, I promise it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> 
Of course, I'm using the mirror throughout this entire process just to make sure that everything is looking the way that I need it to and making sure that there isn't anything that I need to fix before moving on to the next section. Um, okay, so what I'm doing in this clip is I am mapping out the way I want my hair to lay. I know that in this particular section, I want I don't even know if those are considered to be baby hairs. This little section of hair in the front, I know that I want it to lay on my forehead in that way. So I'm just going to take my rat tail comb and I'm going to lay it down in the way that I want it to go before I even flat iron it so that I know when I get to that section the way it's supposed to look after I'm done curling it. And while we're talking about mapping, so because I molded my hair going in the direction of my face, when it's time for me to flat iron these sides, I'm going to make sure that I'm holding the flat iron in a diagonal direction so that it's literally going in the same direction in which I molded my hair initially. So it may look like I'm just downward curling my hair, but it's actually curling diagonally because that is the way that I molded my hair. Just get my shells on the beat. 30 hertz straight up. So now that we're back at this section that I was talking about earlier, because I know the way that I want this piece to lay, after I've curled it, I'm gonna take my rat tail comb and just follow it just to make sure that it continues to lay down the way that I want it to. So on to the next section of my head, which is going to be the middle. I'm going to start at the crown and I'm going to flat iron forward. So just like every other section of my head, I'm going to curl in a downward motion. Also, remember because I'm trying to curl my hair in the same way that I molded it, instead of this piece going forward, it's going to go at a diagonal because that is the way that my hair was molded.
So just like on the right side of my head, now that these pieces are curled, I'm going to use my rat tail cone to lay them down in the way that I want them to stay because these are pieces that I've already mapped out to lay just this way. Just <laughs> get my shells on the beat. 30 hertz straight up. Okay, so this is how my hair looks. Everything is curled. We're completely done. And I honestly changed my mind when it came to this whole oil thing. So I grabbed the Miel oil and I literally only put like two drops in my hand just because I felt bad about not using it in the video. And we're just gonna run it through the hair. So I don't want these curls to stay. I literally just want my hair to be a little wavy. So I'm gonna go in with my got to be hairspray, my wax spray, and I'm just gonna spray just a little. I, it may look like a lot, but I promise it's not a lot. And then I'm gonna go in with my wide tooth comb and we're just gonna comb it all out. And when I'm combing my hair, I'm remembering to comb in the direction in which I curled the hair. So even when I get to the front of my head, I'm making sure that I'm combing those curls forward because that is the way that I curled it. I am now going in with my soft four bristle brush and I'm just smoothing everything else. Like I said, I don't want for my hair to be curly. I just want for it to be a little wavy. So this is going to help the hair to kind of like flatten itself out, if that makes sense. Once I get to the very front pieces, I don't know if you would even consider these to be like face framing hairs, but I know that in the front of my head, I want these hairs to lay a certain way. So I'm gonna go in with my rat tail comb one more time and make sure that I curl those hairs in the way I want them to go. Cause literally how I'm combing them now is literally how they're going to lay for the next week, week and a half, two weeks. Now that I have my hair laying the way that I want to, I'm going to take my satin scarf. It's a square, so I'm going to fold it in half, making it a triangle, and I'm going to take the longest piece, and I'm going to lay it across the front of my forehead. I'm going to take the two pieces, the two tail pieces, and I'm going to overlap them, and I'm going to bring them back around to the front and tie that piece in a bow. Tying my hair like this is gonna give me time to get ready and do whatever else I need to do before I leave and my hair is literally gonna have time to flatten itself out. So I didn't record me combing my hair out because I had to do that before I did my makeup, but I literally just take my wrap off and then I just, comb it until I like the way it looks and that's really it that's literally how you achieve the perfect pixie like every single time so yeah every single product will be oh I didn't even show you on the back Both the back and the top but yeah every single product will be linked in my Amazon storefront I'm probably gonna like link it under like the perfect pixie yeah, that's it. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them down below. I'll be sure to answer all of them. Um, yeah. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. <laughs>